studio now. Thanks for coming in. Um, when John McDonnell said at conference he was working with you mm -hmm. on looking at different scenarios like possibly mm -hmm. a run on the pound, it caused a huge amount of controversy. Can you understand why? I, I, in a way, I was surprised, actually. I was surprised that people are surprised that, uh, that political parties aren't doing this. I mean, you know, the military, the civil service, corporations, banks, they all do this. You know, the surprise was, of course, that one would imagine a Labour government neither um, hoped nor predicted that there would be a run on the pound or capital flight simply because they... Well, I the think pound. given the incompetence, division and fanaticism of the present government and the way they're trashing the pound, and probably when we get elected and the sensible grown-up people are there, the pound will likely go up. But you need to actually think about these problems beforehand. You know, there are potential uh, d difficulties you can foresee and so you can scenario plan for those. And, and it's a good way, you know, you can read about problems that are coming up ahead, but, and you can talk about them, but actually to experience in a sort of game-like atmosphere the pressures of actually making decisions. And you can find out, you can identify problems, think about solutions, try out ideas. If it doesn't work, you can reiterate the game again and again. So when the Treasury do something like this, they do it with very complex mm -hmm. statistical models mm -hmm. and huge amounts of data. Are you able to feed that into this scenario, looking at what markets would do and what that might do to consumer prices or any of that kind of you thing? Can do, you can do it on that basis, but what you're doing more is testing the team coming together and seeing how they respond under pressure. So if you think about a good example of this, if you think about the National Health Service, if this was you know, a flu pandemic, they'd have to think about how to reallocate resources. You know, there would be sickness among the staff. Suddenly there'd be more people going to hospital, going to GP. You get together a group of people who are responsible for running the NHS, you put them together, you put them through a three hour uh, a, a simulation of it. And that's the, that's the same sort of thing that we're doing. We're looking at what happens when Labour gets in its first 100 days in power towards the first budget. What would you do? And so, you, and you, in a sense, it doesn't, whether it's a run on the pound or something, you just create pressures and problems for them to, to create the, 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 the ideas of how they actually have to operate as a team together, partly. So does that give you the opportunity to stress test, for want of another word, some of the more radical policies that Labour came up with in well, the last manifesto, like um, nationalising the water companies or electricity firms or anything like that? Well, they're not very radical in the rest of Europe and around the world, so it's only maybe in the sort of little media bubble of uh, Britain that we think neoliberalism is the only alternative. So those, those are too mainstream for you to bother wargaming out a scenario? No, I mean, obviously, obviously we look... I said the, the initial uh, simulation is only over the first 100 days, so we're just looking at how will we put together a budget. And obviously what you said, you use some of the statistical modelling you could get, but that's not really what the focus is. It's actually making it how the decision-making process. That's what you're trying to uh, basically train people for. And as I said, the military do this, the civil service do this, and if you don't do this, you're in a very bad position. I mean, the good example, before the 2010 elections, the Liberal Democrats did no contingency planning for what happened if there was a hung parliament, where the civil service did. And so they basically monstered them into becoming a junior appendage of the Tory party with the disastrous results that came from that. How so, is this different from the kind of planning and discussions that the Shadow Cabinet would be having in the run-up to a general election anyway? I mean, a plan for the first 100 days, yeah. what policies are the yeah. most important to implement and what the problems with those might be, that's the fundamental job yeah. of an opposition yeah, of to be getting ready for government. Well, of course, and this is just another way of doing it. It's a pedagogical tool which people use. As I said, it's just surpri you're just surprised that a political party is doing this. But if you're the military or the civil service or corporations or the banks, you'd use this tool. <laughs> So you're just surprised. That I'm surprised that you're surprised, you see. I keep <laughs> <laughs> um, so the other thing you're doing, which is separate from the war game scenario, is the apps and the yeah. games, uh, which you say can um, uh, further political yeah. engagement. Yeah. I mean, as opposed to just being entertaining, and they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're fun and funny, yeah. are they really spreading a message as well? Yeah, because they, you know, a, a good example is Corbyn Run. So people said, oh, how are you going to pay for your programme? Yeah, and so what it says is... Well, I've played Carbon Run. That's by mugging bankers in the streets, it would appear, is how you would pay for it if you took Well, it's more Carbon like Run. redistributing the wealth. So the austerity, why we have austerity is because there's tax cuts for corporations and the rich. So you reverse that, you can pay for your social programme. It's got a very basic message in it. And in doing so, it shows you, as you are more successful in raising revenue, you can unlock certain pledges and people join your campaign. All right, we'll stay there if you would, um, Richard Barbrook, and I'm going to come to the <laughs> panel uh, and ask you, Steve, do you think this sounds like a, a, a useful political tool to sit down in a game-like atmosphere and work out how you would implement a radical programme for government? Yes, 
it sounds quite a sensible idea. I mean, it's not the only thing they're doing. Um, and I kind of... I, I can see that the naivety of John McDonnell was to speak aloud in any context about a potential run on the pound. That was the naivety. But to prepare for eventualities, to prepare for the first 100 days by using all kinds of devices is highly sensible. Highly sensible, even when it means that you're, it's being publicised that you're working with games developers, essentially. Well, the, the I mean, what I, what I would say to Rich is you kept going on about military wargaming exercises. I'm writing a co-authoring a book on defence at the moment. I can tell you that in one of the most important recent uh, military wargaming exercises we did with the Americans, a uh, warfighter exercise, we were wiped out within a day because our targeting policy was so outdated. And I think that the fear in the city is exactly that would happen economically because your economic policy is so outdated. And well, so Richard, this, I'll, I'll, I'll let you respond to that and ask you one other question as well, because Jeremy Corbyn was <coughs> oh, saying... She's just a to Tory troll, so, you know, on this <laughs> I'm not a member <laughs> no, no, of the no, Tory there's, party. There's, there's no need to be <laughs> impolite to people that we're um, sharing the studio with. But let me ask you this. I mean, um, Jeremy Corbyn has uh, uh, had an exchange of uh, public words with Morgan Stanley over yeah, whether he yeah. presents a threat to the yeah. British economy. If Morgan Stanley came to you and said, we want to game out what a Labour government sure would mean for are. our business, would I'm you sure, do that for I'm, them? I'm, well, I wouldn't do it, but I'm sure there are people who are doing that for them. I would be very surprised if they're not already doing that. All right. Well, Richard Barber, thank you very much for coming in.